time state change, so must we that the new time requires new response to new challenges. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Glad to be with you once again on the program as we answer the call. The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, is expected any time soon to consider the national medical team for the 2022 Hajj. Tonight on the program, we shall review the major objectives of the medical team, how it operated in the past, and the lessons learned to ensure a successful outing in the forthcoming Hajj exercise. All this in our Spotlight segment. Similarly, in the package, we have our regular segments, such as the Nakon News Diary, Making the Heart and the Quiz. I am Rashida Abubakar, your regular host. Stay tuned for this and more. Every Muslim is a potential pilgrim. To make the Hajj possible for the Ummah, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Narcon, is running a Hajj saving scheme through Jai's Bank. The scheme allows depositors to gradually save for the Hajj over a period of time. Registration into the Hajj saving scheme is ongoing for all Muslims. Muslims wishing to perform Hajj can be enrolled into the scheme through the following outlets. Narcon offices across the country, state pilgrims welfare boards, agencies and commissions, any branch of Jai's bank in the country. Enrollment can also be done directly by logging into dedicated sites for the scheme. Let's participate and support the hedge saving scheme for better hedge services. Thank you for staying with us. Let's begin the program with the news diary as presented from our studio. <laughs> As part of requirements to provide services for Nigerian pilgrims in Saudi Arabia, officials of the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, have embarked on an inspection and screening of service providers. The service providers are those responsible for the provision of services such as accommodation, catering and transportation. NACON's Director of Inspectorate and Compliance, Alhaji Usman Ali Ushamaki, chairs the screening committee. He assured NACOM management that the committee will conclude its assignment on time for final submission of selected service providers to Saudi Ministry of Hajj and Umrah. The criteria used for the screening of prospective caterers include partnership with Nigerian caterer, previous experience in feeding Nigerian pilgrims, five years experience in the catering business and proximity of kitchen to pilgrims accommodation as well as mobility. In the area of accommodation, the Commission considers the following Duly licensed building with tax clearance, distance to the Haram mosques, well equipped dining area, and adequate elevator facilities, and many more. The screening committee has its membership drawn from NACON, State Pilgrims Welfare Boards, and the representative of the Nigerian Consulate in Jeddah. <laughs> In another development, NACON Umrah Monitoring Team has carried out oversight duties on tour operators engaged to provide services to Nigerian pilgrims that perform the Umrah during the Ramadan. Their assignment include collection of data on the performance of the tour operators for NACON to analyze for further action. In addition to this, NACON welcomes legitimate complaints from Umrah pilgrims as well as tour operators on services rendered. Meanwhile, NACON leadership has described as worrisome the unfortunate trend of some Nigerian politicians displaying the posters of their candidates in the forthcoming general elections at the Kaaba. The commission cautions pilgrims to desist from such act as it violates Saudi rules and tantamount to desecration of the holy site and the image of Nigeria. In other news, 
A former president of the Association of Hajj and Umrah Operators of Nigeria, Al Haji Abdul Fattah Abdul Majid, has called on Hajj stakeholders to support the Hajj Savings Scheme introduced by the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON. Al Haji Abdul Fattah stated this in an interview with Daily Trust, saying the scheme is the way to go in resolving challenges associated with the Hajj exercise. He added that the Hajj Savings Scheme makes the Hajj planning and operations seamless and also helps to determine the number of persons that will go to Hajj every year. Alhamdulillah, you are still watching as you answer the call, a public enlightenment presentation that keeps you abreast of the activities of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, and other Hajj-related matters. Central to the well-being of every Nigerian pilgrim is the provision of quality medical services. And because of every heart exercise, the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, and State Pilgrims Welfare Boards gently put up a national medical team to cater for the health needs of Nigerian pilgrims in Saudi Arabia. In our next segment, Spotlight, we shall take you through the aim of having the national medical team and many more. Stay tuned for the details. Don't go away. Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik The provision of medical services to Nigerian pilgrims during the Hajj exercise is a key mandate of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NAKAN. This aspect of the commission is carried out by the National Medical Team. NAKAN started the full implementation of the concept of National Medical Program for Nigerian Pilgrims in 2016. This was in compliance with the Saudi regulations governing the operation of clinics during Hajj. Usually, the National Medical Team has its personnel drawn from the federal and state governments with a ratio of 60 from states and 40 from the federal. With preparations for the 2022 Hajj underway, NACON is receiving applications from medical personnel interested in serving under the program during the Hajj. We have also opened the portal for doctors, nurses and pharmacists who want to provide services for us, uh, for our pilgrims in Saudi Arabia. So, as at this morning, the number of um, uh, applicants that we have gotten is over 2,500. Within a short period, well, the portal was opened on a, on a Monday, and now we have over 2,500 applicants, medical personnel and experts who want to provide services to us. Medical personnel enlisted will be required to take part in pre hatch workshops in order to prepare themselves for the task in Saudi Arabia. Nakan has clinics in Medina and Mecca with few outreaches within areas where pilgrims are lodged. The clinics are licensed to only provide primary health care services. The permission we are given, the license, which not only Nigerian uh, pilgrims, all nationalities, is a law. There are some rules and regulations. What and what and what facilities we should offer to our pilgrims. So primary health care is simple, basic, uh, vital signs of anybody that presented in the hospital. That is blood pressure, temperature, respiration, and the general outlook of the patient to, to see how good or bad, how urgent the pilgrim should be attended when he comes as a sick patient. That's tragedy. That was allowed. And then after that, doctor's consultation. The doctor will examine based on the complaints of the pilgrim and make a diagnosis. Have an impression of what is wrong with the patient. After making such a diagnosis, then he refers to the pilgrim to the pharmacy where he collects medication as outpatient. And home he goes. Where the pilgrim patient was not improving, we immediately transfer to the Saudi hospitals. This is the law 
guiding us how we operate. Uh, we also have what we call tropical diseases that are not prevalent in our region. I mean, that are not prevalent here in Saudi Arabia, like malaria, for example. It's not a common problem. Um, so for that reason, the National Commission makes sure that there are always enough drugs to cover for tropical diseases. Malaria, typhoid, uh, common cold, whatever. But it also goes beyond this because we also have the mandate to supply uh, drugs for hypertension, diabetes, asthma, all these common chronic illnesses. And then, um, as per Saudi uh, regulations, um, we have a isolation room for highly infectious ailments. And um, we also have medical waste management room where we deposit our sharps and other non-sharp medical wastes. The clinics are usually established close to where pilgrims are accommodated to allow for easy access. Because some of the people who are resident in the places we establish those outreaches. So no Nigerian pilgrim that wanted to access our medical facilities had to spend more than 10 minutes of walking distance. Even those that were having some difficulties in walking, ambulances were available. We had three dedicated ambulances in market operation. For effective management, Nakan has in place electronic medical record system known as EMR. This allows for easy capturing of pilgrims' data. Attending to pilgrims will require them entering their data into the electronic medical record system. Thereafter, the patient is checked and drugs prescribed. All these processes are recorded in the EMR. Even though we introduced electronic uh, medical record system in 2017, we have uh, come to realize the benefits of the EMR. Number one, even though pilgrims see it as if it is not time saving, but it was time saving. Number one. Number two, the uh, turnaround where pilgrims come over and over to collect drugs, it was minimized. Because when you come, your name is punctured and your passport number. And the doctor will see, ah, you came yesterday, and you are complaining of the same thing, but we gave you treatment. So, you know, it reduced the turn around of patients coming to collect more drugs. And it was a very good link for the team, the nurse station, the consulting office, and the pharmacy. Similarly, when drugs are required by clinics, the medical personnel in charge supplies the drugs and at the right time, using the EMR to monitor the process. The advantage we have here, which is one of the two major reasons why we established the EMR system, one is to ensure greater transparency and accountability around the way we deal with our drugs. And I'm very happy to note that everybody is quite very clear. Every person that comes in the electronic system will be the one to consider how the distribution is going to be made. Furthermore, ambulances are also available and are effectively put into use. To make pilgrims aware of the existence of Nakan clinics and the services they offer, medical officials carry out awareness campaign by visiting pilgrims in their hotels. Personal hygiene really is the responsibility of the pilgrim. That's one. Two, environmental hygiene. I look at that also in two components. Component number one is your room where you are actually residing. Even though we're staying in hotels, because of the nature of Hajj itself, where there are large numbers, there's simply no way hotel workers can come into your room and be sweeping your room, even for security reasons. Therefore, the understanding is that whatever dirt that you have, in all the hotels, you see waste bins in front of our hotels. Inside our rooms, we have small waste bins. Inside our toilets, we have waste bins. It starts from you, really, to make sure that you don't throw away waste on the floor. Use the waste bins. Added to this, Nakan also ensures that environmental officers are recruited by states to form part of their welfare team in order to help pilgrims maintain proper sanitary conditions in their apartments 
while in Saudi Arabia. For effective administration and service delivery, Nakhon is retaining the leadership of the medical team that served in the previous Hajj exercises. This notwithstanding, new hands will be involved this year. Given the qualified personnel that we have given the duties to, to work as the leading team to help us do all of those, their tapestry and their credentials speaks a lot of volume and they have so much experience in Hajj matters. It's a matter of our majority of whom the principal officers were those who handled the health matters of uh, 2019 when Hajj last held. And we have a wisdom why we had to get into using them with an infusion of one or two new persons. The expectation is that the 2022 Hajj National Medical Team will surpass the feat recorded in previous years and make Nigeria proud. Masha Allah, the program is as you answer the call. Coming up next is making the Hajj. Dr. Abdel Fattah Adeyemi is still our guest. This time, he discusses Ihram as a pillar of Hajj. Let's hear him. Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, 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 Allahumma labbaik, labbaik. Ihram, or declaration of intention, is one of the pillars of Hajj, or Umrah. When and why are pilgrims expected to declare intention, or assume Ihram, for Hajj, or Umrah? What are the do's and don'ts for those in the state of Ihram? You say the intention. Sometimes you say, Labakallahumma. On making the Hajj tonight, Dr. Abdul Fatai Adeyemi answers these and other questions. Ihram is... Um... Uh, the term we use to denote the commencement of hard work itself, the main commencement of hard work. Ihram is um, a process, it's also um, a function, and it's also a pillar of hard. Now, this Ihram is like getting prepared or getting ready to begin the first stage of hard. When assuming the Ihram, must it be at the Emigrant? And this ihram, for those who are going on Hajj from Nigeria, for instance, there's a place we refer to as the Mikot. And that is the place where we are going to stop over to assume our ihram, to don our ihram, or to begin our ihram. So when we get to this Mikot, we will alight from, um, you know, from our vehicles, and then we go into a place where we begin to cleanse ourselves and prepare ourselves for the haram. It's part of the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu that the person should shave the hairs under the armpits, the hair uh, below the navels. Um, we shave um, you no know, any extraneous hair around, especially for men, we have to do that. A man may not shave his beard because beard is part of sunnah, but you can clip your moustache if you see that it is so much. You can do that. And... Um, it's also recommended for a person to take guslu after doing that. Some people say you can just make ablution, depending on uh, the convenience, depending on your... And at the point of finishing the guslu and donning the ihram, we make the intention. And this is very important. Of many other pillars or aspects of Islam, this intention is one of the ones that we need to verbalize. You need to say it out. You know, in Salat and everything, you can say it silently within your heart and everything. But this time around, it is both, uh, you speak it loud and then you also put it in your heart. You understand? You, that is, you say the intention. Sometimes you say, Labaika la humma umrata wa hajj. What type of cloth is allowed for men and women to wear? So you make that intention and then you wear the Ihram cloth. It's two pieces of cloth. One is down, that's white cloth, and the other one is above. For women who are also doing Ihram, they don't need to wear the white uh, two pieces of um, cloth that men wear. They can wear their clothes from home, but ensure that you wear what is um, of hijab, so to speak. 
the men can expose their hair, but women are not allowed to expose their hair. The men can wear those two pieces, but women can wear sewn clothes that they can wear and will cover their body very well. But a woman who wears niqab will have to remove her niqab for that uh, purpose or for that period the person is in ihram. While in ihram, it is forbidden for men to wear socks, gloves, or tie a piece of cloth to cover their head, amongst others. In that situation, you will not be wearing any underwear. In that situation, you will not be wearing your cap as a man. Your head will be left open. You will not be wearing shoes, cover shoes. You will not be wearing socks, whether leather socks or anything like that. You are going to wear something that can show the, the top of your feet. You know, something that we can see that, yes, this is your feet. And that's why we wear the usual bathroom slippers, like we call it in Nigeria here, or what they call flip-flop. Anything that is simple like that, that's all that you wear. And when you wear that one, you begin the talbiyat. That is, you begin to say, Chandi labaik Allah, labaik. Violating Ihram rules by pilgrims comes with penalty, such as fasting or slaughtering of animals. They explain to us that you are going to slaughter a ram that's going to be for sacrifice. I mean, that's you slaughter a ram when you get to uh, the, the Kaaba. There are penalties for that, especially that one of, of slaughtering a ram. And the, the same thing if somebody engages in hunting, there are penalties for that also. These penalties are not uh, punitive per se, it's not to punish somebody, but it's just to ensure that we are disciplined about what we do. Take for instance now, um, the constant reminder that you don't need to wear perfume is there. The constant reminder that you should remove your rings and jewelry is also there. But if a person mistakenly, you know, somebody will not mistakenly conduct in a car. <laughs> <laughs> Some, if a person should do that or a person has intercourse with their wife or their husband then that uh, ihram has already gone moribund you may have to go back to the mikat and take it all over again so if there are some of the uh, mistakes that um, slaughtering a ram will not expiate it can even spoil the whole activities completely so you may have to just take it all over again as much as it is convenient for you and for other people you are together with uh, in the uh, in the group you are moving with. The Islamic scholar urged intending pilgrims to actively participate in the weekly pilgrims' enlightenment so that they can acquire more knowledge about Hajj rites. Alhamdulillah. Now it's time for the quiz. Try your luck with this week's question. Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Welcome to the quiz segment. The question in the last episode was, which of the four pillars did the Prophet ﷺ describe as the Hajj? The correct answer is, standing on the plains of Arafat. The winner is Jabir Abu Bakr from Gombe State. He provided the answer ahead of others. Jabir Abu Bakr will be contacted on how Nakon will reach him with the prize he won. A quiz winner will get 25,000 Naira cash prize. This is part of Nakon's efforts in social investment in Nigeria. Now to the quiz for this week and the question is, name the month in Islamic calendar referred to as Mikatu Zaman. Again, name the month in Islamic calendar referred to as Mikatu Zaman. Text your answer to the number showing on your screen. The winner will be the first person whose correct answer is received. All answers should carry the name and location of sender. Good luck and happy viewing. Once again, good luck to you. But before we round up the program, we take some messages from our viewers, including questions seeking clarification. Umar Bashir from Kano State sent in the first message. It reads, Assalamu alaikum nakon. I have received my quiz prize. Jazakumullah. May Allah continue to guide the entire staff of Nakon. Umar Yarima from Sokoto State sent in the second message. It is also about the quiz prize. It says, Assalamu alaikum. I want to confirm that I got my quiz prize. Thank you. We would like to hear from any quiz winner who has received his or her prize. Also, we are seeking clarification or have questions to ask on any matter relating to Hajj or Umrah management and operations. Can do so through this program. Relevant officers will be contacted to respond appropriately. We also welcome your messages. 
comments, observations, and questions through our mobile number and other social media platforms. Bye for now. Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, 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 Allahumma labbaik, 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 Allahumma labbaik. Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wa al-mulk la sharika laka labbaik.